Hé, hey, salut Ça va Ça va et toi Ouais. Ça fait longtemps que je t'ai pas vu. Ouais, ça fait plaisir de te voir. Assieds-toi. Alors, tes vacances avec Martin, c'était bien Ouais, c'était génial. J'ai rencontré toute la famille, c'était vraiment très cool, quoi. Je te fais un café Ouais, je veux bien. Hé, hey, Rose, je voulais te montrer une photo que j'ai prise. Vas-y, montre. Je voudrais que tu me dises ce que t'en penses. Above all, what I really enjoyed about this one is that it absolutely satisfied any preconceived notion I had about what a romance between two young people in Paris would be like. I think this really checks off all the boxes for me. Um, you know, they're they're obviously they're young and they're healthy and they're beautiful and they're developing film and smoking cigarettes and just doing so many great French things like posing outside um, across the way from the Eiffel Tower and and just frolicking around the town. I mean, it's really what I, um, all I really want from a film like this. It absolutely delivers. It's a beautiful film set in Paris. It was so sensual. The lighting was so soft. The piano music was romantic. It was a Competitive film in that the two photographers were sparring, but then you really sense the chemistry between them. The performances were really subtle. I just love the photography that they did take, the fact that they had this budding romance and the sort of end story where he regrets not continuing the love affair. It's such a beautiful, sultry, sensual, sexy film. I really, really like this one. Great job. Uh, particularly the line capturing a spontaneous joy, which to me defines not only the art of photography, but the act of love itself. I thought Camille did uh, made a very bold decision in doing a nude scene early in the picture because it demonstrated that she is not only interested in captiv capturing beauty itself, but is muse herself, whether she knows it or not, which is what the younger Henri discovers in their quest to repopularize black and white photography. Um, it interested me that they were both so ready to ridicule and mock Notre Dame and the Eiffel Tower and the Thinker as being cliched material, yet it works so significantly well in their photography. At the greatest cinematography, I love the film's title. It, it has different meanings and it is very, very clever. The casting was great and the theme was truly romantic and the whole concept behind it and the whole photographer uh, it was beautiful and tragic but very romantic I really enjoyed it shot really well I, I really dug it and I feel like the um, score I don't know if it was custom made or if it was like you know um, sampled from something else but it was excellent and it, it felt very professionally done like a very high budget uh, score so whoever the composer was um, great work I really dug it like the editing was really on point too from the yeah, from a filmmaking perspective this thing is like pretty flawless I really liked it and um, you know the performances were great as well um, I, I I feel like I think it was in French um, and so the which is like just inherently romantic and so yeah I feel like the performers had really uh, strong chemistry that carries the narrative through and I would I would keep watching this if there was more story that's such cool camera work I mean it was just so modern and they had great sound editing the angle choices were beautiful it was well written very subtle natural performances I mean they were such likable characters I really kind of enjoyed that and just thought it was a really pretty film and thought they just did a fantastic job with this project. I like that the timeline uh, isn't chronological, uh, isn't in order. I love that the film is studded with uh, black and white photography. Um, the footage of the subway ride to the Eiffel Tower that they took, uh, it's so noisy and vibrant that it makes my brain vibrate. Um, mostly this film is about missing your shot, pun intended.
um, your shot at love and beyond. Um, so you shouldn't be too much of a spectator or you might miss your shot. Photography is much more closely aligned with the goals of cinema. And this short film is a great example of why. Because of the visual aspects, because of the, the way an image can pierce your soul in a way that words, things that are auditory, and verbal cannot in, replicate in the exact same way, these emotions, sensations, and feelings, whatnot. We see that in the love story between these two photographers, how they use their passions to fall in love and solidify their relationship. And I think it was great that at the beginning, there's actually, there's critique between them. There's a little bit of this competitive hostility, but that is really just the initial flickering of the flame that, begins their romance and the ending is of course poignant and um, sentimental in the loveliest of ways as we see him years later after she has passed you know recalling their the inception of their relationship and how it evolved and he still has his passion for photography and it's something that in a way keeps them together even beyond death so it's a lovely film about how not just love but about how our passions can help fuse our love uh, with those around us help us find it solidify it and hold on to it even long after they're gone <laughs>